welcome. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle, Finsbury Park. It's the first Sunday of Lent, and I'm thinking of Lent as a gift. In a time when we have less contact with each other than usual, we are invited to come closer to God. And yes, we, we see Christ on the way of sorrows, and we look within and reflect on the way we fall short of our calling. But it is our calling and we can be open with God. As St. James, I find St. James quite helpful sometimes because he, he talks to us from his experience, I think. He says, when we come close to God, God comes closer to us. So, welcome. Welcome on this first Sunday of Lent. You're welcome. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come to make our confession. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been 
Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the rainbow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on earth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A reading from Psalm 25 verses 1 to 10. Your paths, O Lord, are love and faithfulness. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Your paths, O Lord, are love and faithfulness. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Your paths, O Lord, are love and faithfulness. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness. O Lord, your paths are love and faithfulness. Gracious and upright is the Lord. 
Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Your paths, O Lord, are love and faithfulness. Praise and honour to Christ Jesus. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise and honour to Christ Jesus. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forty days and forty nights in the desert. Is it time for more restraint? What would a good Lent be this year? There's been quite a lot of paring down of life. Let's come to this Lent with an open mind. I'm glad we have the reading from Genesis that Aunt brought us to start with. God tells Noah, I'm making a covenant with you, a memorandum of understanding, a promise. I'm declaring a new relationship and you can trust me. And in case you didn't get it, he says it several times. I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you forever. And with every, every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals and every animal of the earth with you. And here's a sign. When my bow is seen in the sky, the ancient, that ancient weapon of mine, where I have hung it up, it's the sign of my agreement with you and with every living thing for all generations. And this is repeated twice more. When I see the sign, and I will remember, and again, I will remember. Two things strike me in this. Reassurance and care and love of the earth, of creation, of every living thing, four times mentioned, and then all flesh. And I was noticing this at the beginning of Lent here, this reading. I was thinking back to Christmas and, and how again we see Jesus in the stable at the centre of the animal kingdom, as well as among the people. With every living thing, God loves all his creation. And then we had the psalm and the psalmist was confident enough to remind God of his promises. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. When we look at our gospel reading from Mark, the story of the temptation of Jesus, 40 days in the desert. It begins with, as it does, as it is told to us, 
with God's wonderful words of encouragement at Jesus' baptism. You're my beloved son. I'm pleased with you. And then the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness, whereas the writer to the Hebrews tells us, he was tempted in every way as we are. And he withstands it. And then we learn that after John the Baptist was arrested, more bad news, that Jesus bounds back to Galilee, proclaiming the good news. Sometimes called the Lenten sandwich. My beloved son, the way, the path of the desert, the arrest of John. And then the message of Jesus, the kingdom is very near. Repent, believe the good news. And you remember the very beginning of Mark is the good news of Jesus Christ. It begins with that line. And the good news is that love, love triumphs. But as we follow Christ, we see that we have to follow him in a hard path and we have to look at ourselves and prepare ourselves. Lent reminds us of our sins, of our selfishness. It makes us think about things we'd rather not think about. Times we were mean, betrayals or carelessnesses, things that have things that we would do differently if we had the time back. It's interesting this thing about confession, how it can strike you differently at different times. Now, I remember a young girl saying to me, and she hadn't been at church much, and she'd been at church a couple of times. And she said, well, I do like it, but there's something I don't like. It's, it's the confession at the beginning. People are not all that bad. We're not all that bad. So I, I looked at her and I thought, well, I can see where she's coming from. This is, a, this is a girl from a safe and stable home who has also found it easy to settle into school. She hasn't encountered too much of the hard times yet. And we know, of course, that people aren't all that bad. There's lots of good in them, given half a chance. But still, I didn't agree with her because I think we really always need the confession. I had to think then about how to answer without, without denying the negativity that she had felt in the words of the confession. So I told her to look at the world and how so many people have so much and we have so much and so many people have so little. No doubt over time she will have to learn as we all learn about how badly we can get things wrong. But I didn't need to say that then. We are complicit in the way the world is. And we all find out that we don't always do right. To make a good Lent is to turn to God, though, who can restore our souls. It's not only to remember our sins. It's to remember how much we have been forgiven by people and by God. It's to remember and believe the good news and to be grateful. To remember the words of God that God put into the mouth of Isaiah. Before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Lent is a time to look inward. We are called to grow in self-awareness. And it's also the time to ask God where we're to go now for guidance, to lead us, to take us by the hand. And it's a time to be more aware of the needs of others around us and of the world. Because things don't have to stay the same and they won't. And we are part of what they will be, because what we do does make a difference. 
And if you were here on Ash Wednesday, you heard something from the prophet Joel, which is very relevant here. Who knows whether he or she will not turn and leave a blessing behind them, a grain offering or a drink offering for the Lord your God. And the words from Matthew, yes, fast. But when you fast, don't look dismal. Wash your face and pour oil on your head. Put on your best moisturizing cream. Smile. Maybe you think I ought to be asking you to give things up now. And you may want to and it may help you. Maybe things have been going well for you in these lockdown days. And maybe you've been having a hard time, a time of, of deprivation and pain. Maybe to fast would help you and maybe it's not what you most need. So whether you fast or not, what really matters now is to remember God's overarching love. How it spans whatever you're going through. You aren't alone. We're invited to follow through this land, follow Jesus. And what ways we're to be following him will, will become clear to us if we keep our hearts open. And we must remember the encouragement that God gives Jesus before he's sent out into the desert. You are my beloved child, you are. Remember how Jesus holds on to what he believes in. His calling in the face of temptation. And the joy and the healing that he brings when he bounds back victorious into Galilee. And calls us to follow him. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, we pray for your people throughout the world. Today in particular, we pray for the Church of the Province of Central Africa, for Albert Chama, their Archbishop, and Bishop of Northern Zambia. Amongst your people in this diocesan deanery, we pray for St. Stephen's Canterbury, and for John Beauchamp, their vicar, and Matt Barber, their drama group lead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this world, that you have given us as our home. And we bring before you now the people of Rwanda, where the government is using judicial processes to clamp down on opponents and dissidents. We ask that the international community and the African Union are able to bring pressure to bear. We pray for the people of Gaza, where a small number of people are being vaccinated this week. We urge the government of Israel to make the vaccine more widely available. In this country, we pray for all those who work in emergency rescue following the horrific accident on the mountain in Cumbria. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who worship in this church. And this week, we pray in particular for the team preparing for conversations with the diocese. And we ask your blessing during the coming year for those whose birthdays are at this time. Jackie Ajang, Lena Scantlebury, Michaela Hawkins, Desjonia Mills Campbell, Lucy Robinson, Anne Rose, and Dina Tria Mills Campbell. We pray for our life together with our neighbours in this parish. This week, br bringing before you our neighbours in Rock Street and the Finsbury Park Trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those for whom prayer is asked. Eleanor, Brian, Andy and Amanda. Inez Sinclair and family. Rose Waits, Catalina Ronzon, Paul Crozier, Nick Armstrong, 
Davis Machiella, Lynn, Elsie Furlinger, Grace Dawson, Ray, Jackie and Terry, Paul, Simon and Angela, Stella Stavrou, all the staff and residents at Autumn Gardens, and Elizabeth Allen, Alec and Caroline, Sue, Cynthia Mapp and family, Gloria, Deirdre Waddle and family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the departed. Amongst those who have died recently, we pray for Gillian Banks. Of those, the anniversaries of whose deaths are at this time, we remember in particular Ewan Christian, Jay Dauphin, Marjorie Stringer, Blessing Nuosa, Ivy Nelson, Ireda Barry, Melody Townsend, Bill Chinnery, Cheryl Sinclair, and Liz Russell. We bring before you those whose lives have been cut short by accident, violence, or natural disaster. We pray for those who, in despair, have been driven to take their own lives, and for those with no one to pray for them. We give thanks for those who, through their lives, have brought others closer to you. And as we join our prayers with those of all the saints, but especially those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son, Thomas the Apostle, and John the Evangelist, we bring our own prayers to you in silence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bring together our prayers and our praises in the words that our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
have a few a few notices. Our two Lent courses, um, both of them um, based on readings from St. John and about using scripture to find our way in our everyday life, are starting this week. Tuesday at 7.30, Tuesday the 23rd of February, 7.30, and Friday the 26th of February at 2 o'clock. So I'll be welcoming you on Tuesday and Rowan will be welcoming you on Friday. Of course it is on Zoom, but well, I think we're getting a bit better at it. I hope you do too. Now, the other thing is, of course, that it's Sunday morning and at the end of this service, we will have our Zoom coffee at 11.30. Time to chat. The Lord be with you. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and grace. And Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Abide in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.